Hi everybody! This is the video for the first week of Axi 231, uh, the Theory of Interest course at University of Waterloo. Um, I just wanted to go over what we did this week. First of all, if you don't have this textbook, you may want to pick up a copy of it. You don't have to, uh, but that's what the textbook is and I'll be referring to it a lot. If you want to pick that up, that's great. So I just want to go over the definitions that we talked about this week in class. The first one, well the first two, they go together hand in hand, are interest and principal. So interest is the money that you earn periodically on some amount that you've invested, and the principal is that amount that you invested at the start. So those are just the two basic definitions. Then we moved into sort of a more mathematical definition of how money grows, and that was an accumulation function. An accumulation function, little a of t, is just the amount that the money has grown to by time t. And we usually assume a principle of one dollar invested at time zero. We looked at two specific kinds of interest, simple and compound. Simple pays a fixed percentage of the original capital every period. So in that case, you don't actually earn interest on the interest you've earned. You just earn interest on the original balance or the original principal. Obviously, over a long period of time, that's not very good. And simple interest is rarely used in practice. The more common case is compound interest. And that's where you earn a fixed percentage, again, but of the entire balance in the account up to the beginning of each period. So you earn interest on the interest every year. And obviously, compound interest is going to grow much faster. And over the long term, you're going to get a lot more money with a compound interest rate. Uh, the last definition from this week was an effective rate, and that was some way of comparing possibly two different accounts or two different investments by looking at the effective interest rate in a common time period. So an effective rate can be calculated over any time period. Usually we use a time period of one year. And the effective rate, whether we're looking at continuously paid interest or discreetly paid interest, is always the same. It's just the amount of interest earned during that period divided by the amount in the account at the start of that period. So that's a nice general definition, easy to remember. Interest in the period divided by amount at the beginning of the period. And that was actually all the definitions this week, some very important ones, but nothing too complicated. So if you're following along in the textbook, that's what we've done this first week is chapter one, sections one through five. And next week, week two, we're gonna be starting on chap still chapter one, but sections six through 10. So if you want to read ahead, go for it, do that. Um, I've also posted some tutorial problems on the ANGEL website. Uh, I don't have them on hand right now, they're there, you can look them up. They're from this textbook, again, from chapter one. And you can see those problems if you want to take a look at them before the tutorial on Monday. Tutorial, of course, is at 3.30 p.m. and I will be leading it this time. All the other times it'll be some TAs. So hopefully we'll see you at the tutorial and of course before that in class on Monday. For those of you that are writing the P exam, good luck. Hope you do well and I'll see you in class. Bye.